Blending or synergy means combined energies in togetherness. It is natural for nature to express herself in diversity, and this diversity becomes compact in a greater directedness when it is intelligently and harmoniously put together to create new units of wholeness. Nature in her medical plants is a master for that. A bouquet of flowers, for example, finds its charm in a collectedness of diverse flowers. But also a meal finds its savor in the combination of different tastes, linked together under the creative genius of a good chef. Essential oils can contain sometimes hundreds of different compounds, each of which has a specific synergistic influence on the others. The complexity of this intrinsic balance of compounds defines the special healing effects of the plant or its oil. Any of these compounds we want in true medical aromatherapy. Any of them has been either created in the plant over long spans of time, but maybe also just emerged during distillation. And we trust that nature knows best why and how. We know today Every medicinal plant has a number of healing effects pertaining to its special energy fields. Each essential oil is not only defined by its diverse so-called active ingredients, but by the totality of its many compounds and trace elements. They match with the human organism in intrinsic ways and can fill up its specific energy holes, which we call ailments. Actually, there are no passive ingredients. Every ingredient has or had its role in the long corridor of time of plant evolution. Although a specific action of a plant may appear to depend on a single chemical constituent, writes Jane Buckle in her book Clinical Aromatherapy, isolating it may not make the effect more active or safer. Nature is not a fool. Plants have their own synergistic action that is irreplaceable. End of quote. The famous French physician and pioneer in aromatherapy research, Dr. Jean Valnet, described long ago already, for example, that the common use of eucalyptol, isolated from eucalyptus oil through repeated rectification, as it was and sometimes still is common practice, loses its major therapeutic effects on the mucous membranes and bronchies. French aromatherapist René Gadefossé made it clear that spike lavender oil adulterated with turpentine, which also had become normal practice during his time, completely lost its wound healing properties. Veterinaries complained that the animals they tried to cure only showed itching and eczema after the treatment, whereas pure spike lavender oil helped spontaneous healing of wounds. Fur growth happened fast, scabies and tinea disappeared in no time. Not only that the terpenes added to the spike lavender oil are rather skin irritating compounds, but in this case they diluted the holistic complexity of the essential oil. It is clear, wrong dilution of an essential oil as well as adding certain synthetic compounds or rectifying the oil for its potential perfumery notes means automatically destroying the intrinsic medicinal dynamics of it. Nature has taken millions of years to try out which compound goes well with which, how much goes well with how much. It is the melody of an ancient song which we put into a disharmony if we rearrange the subtle synergies of Mother Nature. But hmm, our farmer people still seem to know better. And if the most active ingredient may be isolated from the others and then analyzed on lab tests in vitro or in vivo, it may, single as it is then, have a different or even negative side effect. Plants have this amazing capability to turn off certain effects of another compound which in isolation would turn out to be negative. This is so-called quenching. But in reality, it would be better to say plants do not need to work with isolated compounds. They have their own laboratory rules 
and in that sense they do not need to quench. Some of this we find in what I call the paradox of myrrh oil. It shows very clearly the value of synergistic versus isolative. Myrrh contains many compounds that in isolation are toxic, phototoxic. Yet myrrh oil is considered one of the safest and softest essential oils in aromatherapy. Myrrh oil contains more so-called phototoxic furanoid compounds than any other oil. These compounds amplify ultraviolet light and if in form of an oil they are applied to the skin, they cause sunburn and skin damage when one is exposed to the sun. Yet, and that is a paradox, myrrh oil is actually a sun shield, a UV protector. The ancient Egyptians knew this for thousands of years already. And what is not less interesting, whether a specific furanoid compound acts as an amplifier or a destroyer of UV energy depends on the biochemical structure of the specific compound and yes, on the structure of the other accompanying compounds present in the oil which may neutralize or quench its phototoxic tendencies. Maybe in the case of myrrh oil, it is the high presence of the reputed softies in aromatherapy, the sesquiter paints. This is exactly what Dr. David Stewart in his book The Chemistry of Essential Oils Made Simple suggests when he says, quote, Myrrh illustrates how chemical compounds that are dangerous alone can be safe and beneficial in the company of another compound that mitigates their harsh personalities. Yes, and then on the same subject, it is remarkable, Jane Buckle says in her famous book Clinical Aromatherapy, isolated citral and aldehyde present in lemongrass oil produces a more severe sensitization reaction at a lower concentration than does the complete essential oil, which contains a higher percentage of citral. However, this is how drug companies usually approach research of herbs. They isolate and synthesize. End of quote. Essential oils are complex mixtures of compounds, as we know today. Several essential oil components, for example, may act together to inhibit a virus. Astani et al. have shown, for example, that the antiviral activity of eucalyptus oil on herpes simplex is much greater 
than its major component, 1.8 sinew oil or eucalyptol. And tea tree oil has a greater antiviral potential than its major component, terpenein 4 ol gamma terpenein and alpha terpenein. Synergistic effects have also been studied between essential oils and synthetic antiviral agents, for example. Civitelli et al. noted an antiviral synergistic effect between a type of mint essential oil, the menta suaveolens, and a synthetic compound called acyclovir on herpes simplex. When diverse elements combine in an intelligent way, they enhance each other's uniqueness so that the total becomes more than the collection of its parts, merely added mathematically together. The already mentioned Dr. Jean Valnet, one of the founders of modern aromatherapy, already pointed out that the electrical resistance of essential oils blended together was easily doubled or tripled compared to the added electrical resistance of its single oils. A good natural perfume uses all kinds of synergistic laws in order to create olfactive experiences which often are strikingly different from the single fragrant elements combined. Top notes like bergamot, lemongrass or eucalyptus oils with their high volatile compounds unite with hard notes like lavender, clary sage or petit grain to be transformed or rather enchanted by base notes like frankincense, jasmine, sandalwood or vetiver. A good perfume composed with natural compounds is never a single odor experience, of course, but lives from the blend of a complex unity of fragrances put together under the guidance of a refined consciousness and a trained nose. It will send olfactive messages to the brain and this over hours or even days so that one can rejoice in a symphony of a total experience throughout the sequential brain firing of its compounds. Synergies can be made for different purposes. And not to forget, every blend, therapeutic, environmental or perfumery, has its own personal touch and its own lifetime also. One more thought on this. It is not the strength of the fragrance which we are looking for, but its richness and natural profile. The fading time, the disappearance, so to say, of the fragrance or of a blend is not a sign of quality or lack of quality, but simply linked to the natural compounds of the oils and their evaporation rate, which differs if we have to do with a head, a heart or a base note. Of course, a lemon oil, which is a head note, will fade more quickly than a patchouli or a cinnamon oil, which are more base notes. On the other hand, the mixing with synthetic, semi-synthetic or isolated compounds will certainly strengthen the aroma of a blend, for example by adding citral to Sicilian lemon oil or menthol to a peppermint oil, but it is an unfortunate practice because it destroys the natural complexity of the synergy. The same happens in the case of most of the modern perfumes which smell strong and stay long due to the majority of the synthetic compounds, meaning also everything far from natural. An experienced aromatherapist usually does not look for the fixing qualities of a compound, as he is more aware of the energy factor of the oil. We can say the inner value. He is not interested to know for how many hours an oil will remain on the skin, which is a mere perfumery viewpoint, or how strong it smells, which is quite a superficial approach. He is interested in keeping in tune with nature. An essential oil or a blend of oils is a very personal thing. The liking or disliking of it has to do with our innermost feeling, our emotional states, state of health and well-being, personality, etc. As you inhale the fragrance of an essential oil or you produce a blend, close your eyes, try to focus on nothing else. Develop a personal, intuitive perception of what the oil does to you. 
Is there an echo in some part of the body? Is there an echo in some part of your feelings, maybe? The anthropologist John Havlicek suggested that there is a strong interaction between perfume and individual body odor, and that individuals select fragrances which complement their own odor. He found that when people apply self-selected fragrances, the effect is rated as more pleasant than when they apply a scent chosen by another. In learning about aromatherapy and fragrance notes, we come to understand that essential oils can be blended together for many different purposes. The most important is to create synergies for enhancing well-being, enhancing health and longevity within the human physiology. Now, within this theme of fragrance for life, we can follow different lines of approaches, some of them more simple, some of them more complex. A simple way would be to understand that certain natural biochemical compounds found in essential oils have this and that effect, and to blend oils which contain a majority of the same compound. For example, the basic similarity in the biochemical profile of ho oil, rosewood oil and also Spanish marjoram, all showing a high percentage of linalool, a monoterpene alcohol, would already make a good synergy. We could take advantage of the tonifying but also highly antibacterial effect of this natural plant linalool in blending these oils together. We should, however, not forget that the curative effect of plant compounds is not only linked to the dominant chemotypes, of course, but also lies in what perfumery would call the impurities or trace elements, powerful minorities often hidden behind the impact of the major compounds. Another synergy approach would be to blend oils from the same genus, the same cultivar or vegetal group, and with this touch the underlying plant field or resonance which has been built into this group by nature herself. For example, combine different types of lavender oils or different types of thyme oils, eucalyptus oils, basil oils, etc. Although most often very different in their biochemistry and their olfactive notes, all these oils from the same genus or same cultivar follow a hidden line of sameness which can only enhance the desired therapeutic effect. This was shown, for example, in a study at the University of Brighton in UK with a thyme oil blend of four types of thyme. Thyme timol, thyme linalol, thyme terpenine 4 all and thyme alpha terpenine. The oil blend, quote, exhibited significant inhibitory and bactericidal effects against several strains of methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Similarly for a lavender cultivar blend, for example here, quote, different lavender oils together show better results against methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus than single-species lavender. This shows how richness in biochemical compounds adds to the efficiency of natural aromatic antibiotics." End of quote. Similar to this is the method to combine oils from the same species but stemming from different organs of the plant. For example, we can combine in the citrus aurantium, the bitter orange tree, three essential oils, namely neroli oil from the flower, bitter orange, cold pressed oil from the peel of the fruit, and pitigan bigard oil, the oil from the leaves. This can make a powerful synergy with a soothing antidepressive and relaxing effect. Good to use as a pillow spray or as an additive for a light massage before sleeping. And much more of course than just that. Or another example, we could take angelica root oil, angelica leaf oil and angelica seed oil for creating a synergistic blend in order to enhance the anxiolytic effect of this beautiful oil. Another possibility, we can also think making synergies in the Ayurvedic way. 
if we follow information gathered from ancient folk medicine, often based on age-old wisdom, we can find guidelines which allow us to deduce elementary laws of nature from them. Ayurveda, the wisdom of longevity from ancient India, tells us that we have to look at the doshas, the so-called doshas of plants and of the human physiology, in order to create balance in the system. A physiology which is overheated by pitta dosha would not be given easily a blend with dominant pitta oils like thyme, oregano or savory for example, but rather a cooling blend with peppermint, lavender, eucalyptus or the like. On the other hand, if we want for example to enhance the fire element, the agni, in the digestive system, we would tend to use the oils which have a certain pitta increasing action of course, in action on the human body like cinnamon, holy basil, anise and others. And then there is of course the endless possibility to perform therapeutic blending. One may blend oils with a perspective to strengthen the physiology, so to say, in a multiple stroke, a blend to help digestion for example. It will not only focus on the stomach or the intestines, but also try to give relief to the liver and also possibly to the gallbladder. And the blend to help against insomnia will not only calm the mind and soothe the nerves, but also work on underlying problems like depression maybe, or negative emotions, and may also include oils which have an opening antispasmodic effect. It is the overall feature of synergistic aromatherapy to target different layers of the same problem and not like an allopathic medicine remain stuck with the symptom alone. So in this sense we do not put cortisone on a rash of neurodermatis but we look after the hidden source of the problem and then try to synergistically treat different psychophysiological levels at the same time. Essential oils are naturally what we call adaptogens. Their biochemical synergistic profile, and this is especially true for psychoneuroaromatherapy, allows different strategies of application according to the need of the moment, the need of the person. If we study the compounds of nature's apothecary more in depth, we can see that contrasting but not contradictory effects are built in the rich structures of essential oil. Orange oil may wake you up in the morning and help you fall asleep in the night, for example. Or for example, bergamot oil. It has mainly terpene hydrocarbons. Limonene about 60%, monoterpenols, linalol about 10% and esters, linalyl acetate, about 17 to 20%. Now, Limonene as a monoterpene has mainly stimulating effects. Linalol as a monoterpenol has mainly calming, soothing effects. And linalyl acetate as an ester is a great mood enhancer, is euphorizing. So we can say, if we are facing a psychological setup where we want these three effects together, the synergistic natural blend of compounds in bergamot oil can be the right answer. We should never forget, nature is never linear, but rather star-like or even paradoxical. Her time-tested aromatic blends are the result of responses to age-old challenges, leading to a holistic richness and healing power to which we can only bow down in admiration. We should never forget, an essential oil in itself is already a synergy. In most cases, a synergy of numerous biochemical compounds, as we said already. Nature herself, in creating plant life, has disposed of countless elements, often put together in a synergistic way in this or that plant, so that one plant often can take care of many different functions simultaneously. Each plant and each oil has numerous healing effects pertaining to its specific energy field which finds its outer expression through color, shape, size, fragrance, compounds, etc. These compounds match with the human organism in a very intrinsic way, often like key and lock, 
and can fill up these specific energy holes created by weakness or disease. And this in a normally frictionless flow of energy throughout the physiology. And as we have seen, it is the complex structure of these compounds which is also the reason for the multiple healing effects of one and the same essential oil. Peppermint oil, for example, helps simultaneously against nervous, hepatic, skin, circulatory, immune, intestinal and psychological disorders. Nature is in herself the best example for synergistic behavior. On the other hand, chemical treatment of plants with substances such as herbicides, pesticides, chemical fertilizers, this has been scientifically shown, tends to decrease the richness of the phytochemical compounds and therefore diminishes the multiple healing effects of essential oils. Now, if we analyze these few examples, we find that the main reason for the synergistic approach in modern aromatherapy is to increase diversity in unity. We want to create a specific effect, of course, and in order to create it, we need to introduce complexity in an intelligent way, without disturbing the natural balance. Again, contrary to the allopathic monomolecular approach, which, as we know, tries to isolate the active principles from a plant and then in a second step tries to synthesize the same, aromatherapy goes hand in hand with Mother Nature, honoring and maintaining the infinite synergistic complexity of its creations. Isolating certain compounds like the famous methyl, eugenol and rose oil and then finding them toxic is often a very childish approach of modern pharmacology. And to want to prove that this or that essential oil is hazardous has often more pharma industry motivations than natural scientific curiosity. Nature has already provided within its own complex subtle energy or biochemical structures of all the means to balance certain compounds against certain others, as we have seen, so that the totality of compounds of an essential oil usually is available in a humanly inoffensive way, provided that the right dosage is respected. As said already the famous Greek physician and philosopher Hippocrates more than 2000 years ago. The synergistic dynamics of nature is beautifully exemplified in bergamot and its oil. Bergamot essential oil has been found to inhibit the survival and proliferation of a number of different neuroblastoma cells through the activation of multiple pathways leading to both necrotic and apoptotic cell death, as shown already in 2010 in research of Orsino et al. But what is particularly interesting in this research, further shown by Russo et al. in 2013, that the association of limonene and linalyl acetate, both major compounds of bergamot oil, but not the exposure to the single compounds, caused significant cytotoxicity, providing that it is the combined action of these two compounds together, one monoterpene and one ester, which cause the cancer cell death. Which means nothing else that different components together may activate different pathways to execute cell deaths. Here, quote, none of the single tested constituents, D-limonin, linalyl acetate, linalol, terpenine, pinene, bergoptane, all these reduce the cancer cell viability while only the combination of limonin and linalyl acetate was able to induce cell death." End of quote. And finally here in the same context, quote, the presence in the phytocomplex of numerous constituents in essential oils that simultaneously interfere with multiple signaling pathways might be the key for overcoming the current limit of chemotherapeutic agents and in particular the development of multidrug resistance. End of quote. All this shows in many different ways that the presence of special so-called functional groups in an essential oil may predominate, but the complex of all together, like in a human society, create a completely new network with unpredictable interactions among the play partners. 
and their corresponding resonances on the terrain. This is the reason why, for example, we do not want to lose the over 500 compounds of rose oil, although the isolated methyl in rose oil may have been found to be a risk compound. But nature has already, within this complexity, provided a means to balance certain compounds against certain others. We have seen that. So that the total of compounds of an oil usually is available in a humanly inoffensive way. Seen from the therapeutic angle, one cannot say it enough. Complexity increases the chance for healing and prevents unwanted side effects. Experience shows that so many bacteria or viruses through time get immune against a number of pharmacochemical drugs. The antibiotic crisis is not a myth. This is one of the reasons why more and more natural practitioners, fortunately, and physicians today prescribe essential oils, often even as the first aid remedy to use and often with such success that it surpasses by far the expectations of those who are still trained in the use of allopathic chemical synthesized remedies. Of course, there is an urgent need for more research and understanding in the realm of medicine. So many compounds in nature have not been explained with regards to their healing properties, have not been analyzed in a scientific way, have not been fully understood in their interdependence and mutually enhancing dynamism. This does not give us the right to assume that they are useless. And so much of human physiology and its numerous ailments has not been observed in its reactions and resonances to medicinal plants and their essential oils. If we have chosen the way of scientific investigation in our Western world, we owe it to our established principles to be able to prove that natural remedies work and that they are harmless, and not the opposite, to ignore them or even blackmail them. Of course, we are no more using the shamanic way of intuitive, spirit-guided healing, nor the way of our ancestors, based on traditional knowledge and experience of thousands of years of living in togetherness with nature and her plants. It is a pity, certainly, but that's how it is today. But things are looking better already, I would say. I think we are just starting again a new era of health giving, where science and nature will work together in a complementary alternative way, so that our modern approach and the ancient knowledge of plant medicine can join together for endless new discoveries. And coming back to the synergy theme of nature, in increasing the complexity in our blends and comprehending the intrinsic biochemical playfulness of nature, we give ourselves a higher chance to tune in with the plant world and thus increase our own curative probabilities and the chances for real healing. It is like entering a castle with so many locked up rooms, chambers, halls, corridors. The more keys we have with us, the greater will be the chance to unlock the doors and enter the castle. That's why in the final end, in creating aromatic formulas, we are well guided if we take inspiration from nature and from those who were and are connected to nature's wholeness. Nothing has been invented or just randomly put. Any blend of essential oils can take into consideration elements of ancient folk medicine and experience often already confirmed by modern aromatherapy research. And again, it is this blending of ancient and modern, which seems to me at least, the most reliable way for a powerful and effective nature's medicine of the future. And one more thought. Deciding to use an essential oil via the fragrant spell, via the call of the knowers, via prescription, via testimonials from other users, etc., is all a very personal thing. So it is also about the individual effect of each of these oils we decide to use. Any essential oil within its batch, its quality, its variability, etc., will hit something in us which is absolutely unique. But nobody, even not ourselves, can really 
foresee the final effect. And what is the final effect anyway? If most happens behind the curtain of our own capacity or observation. So then, one milliliter of this, two drops of that, three milliliters of this, fine, recipes can give suggestions. They are useful in many ways. But after all, we have to learn with intuition and experience, not just with books and formulas. Nature is a secret player, and we do not need to know all its hidden games. We can admit that the cloud of unknowing is a good direction. We are not groping in darkness if we do not have a 100% predictability of all the effects of essential oils. And we do not need to go with the biochemical pathway in order to receive the full spectrum of the oil's radiance into our system. The final question for me is, how does the oil or formula blend within ourselves? I like this commentary of David Stewart in his book The Chemistry of Essential Oils Made Simple. Quote, The packet of probabilities of effects is a matter of chemistry. The chemical composition or collection of compounds that makes up a specific oil determines its possibilities. A given oil is not capable of all possibilities, only those within the capability of the constituents present. But the determination of which aspect of the bundle of possibilities represented by the oil's chemistry will manifest in a particular person is a matter of quantum physics. And quantum physics is subject to desire, feeling and intent. In short, the potential action of an oil is defined and limited by its chemistry, but the determinating factor as to which potential action will manifest is defined and limited by the attitudes of the anointer and the receiver. So to conclude on this short overview on the synergistic effect and nature of essential oils, aromatherapy works in a very holistic way. Most of its amazing healing effects can often not be traced back to simple scientific investigation only, but necessitate a broader spectrum of vision, which has to include the subtle energy part of the medicinal plant and its essential oil as well as a very individual and unique situation of each person. This area, beyond scientific proof in the strict sense, is not less scientific in a larger sense and involves psycho-emotional and psycho-spiritual data experiences, testimonials, etc. This will lead in the near future, I hope, to a new era of holistic medicine, based on a very much needed groundbreaking understanding of real healing, where matter, mainly food and medicine, behavior, energy, consciousness and spirit all work together in one direction, evolution of man and human society on this beautiful planet.